When it comes to cycle geometry, uh, getting the keywords right from the statement is the most important thing because with the keywords, you are then able to answer all the questions. If you're wondering why I'm starting with 8.2, 8.1 was saying let's prove the Turncourt theorem and we've already done that. I will leave the link in the description. In the diagram below, PWRS is a cyclic quadrilateral. So cyclic quadrilateral, I'm writing that down. So we have cyclic quad and then um, the circle is centered at O, P, PSW is an equilateral triangle. So I have triangle PSW, which is equilateral. So when a triangle is equi equilateral, all the angles are equal. The only way all the angles can be equal is if all the angles are equal to 60 degrees. TW is a tangent to the circle, so we have tangent. And then we have radi OR, right? Radius OR, so let's say radi. And then OW are drawn, and then we are told that W1 is equal to 25 degrees. So all the questions that we are going to answer, we are going to stick to these keywords, except from basic things like angles on a straight line and so on. So 8.2.1, 8.2.1, a says uh, determine given reasons the size of S1. So we are interested on S1. Yes, S1 here. So how can we use cyclic quad to determine S1? Uh, S1 is not a complete angle, right? So I don't see how we can immediately jump to S1. The next keyword talks about triangle PSW being equilateral. S1 is not in that triangle, so I don't see how we can use that. And then the third point talks about uh, the tangent. We have tangent TW, right? And this is how we are going to determine S1. Look at W5. W5 is between TW and RW. And then at the same time, RW subtends S1. So S1 will be equal to W5 it will be equals to 25 degrees and why are we saying so turn code theorem and then let's move to b uh, b says let's find o1 again we're not thinking about anything else either than the four keywords we have cyclic quad this no immediate connection between o1 and the cyclic quad angle psw uh, O1 is not an angle on PSW, right? So we cannot, it cannot help us with anything. And then tangent, uh, O1 is at the center of a circle. Uh, there's no immediate way that is connected to a tangent, right? Because uh, usually when we're talking about tangent, we're talking about the Tancourt theorem. And now the only option we're left with is radi, right? Let's look at how radi can help us. Uh, obviously, OR and OW are equal to each other. So angle R2 will be equal to angle uh, W3 plus W4, right? We're saying that uh, this angle here is equal to this angle here. So now we can say that O1 is equal to 180 minus 2R2, right? Because we're going to minus R2 and we're going to minus W3 plus W4. But we know that W3 and W4 is equal to R2. So minus 2R2. So if we can find a way to find R2 or W3 and W4, then we can find uh, angle O1, right? OW is a radius, right? And it touches uh, the tangent. Where it touches the tangent, forms an angle of 90 right uh, we know that for sure so now we can see that w3 plus w4 plus w5 is equal to 90 degrees uh, i'm talking about uh, this angle here right but we know what w4 is uh, we know what w5 is w5 is 25 degrees right so we're going to have w3 plus w4 being equal to 90 degrees minus 25 degrees and that will be equal to 65 degrees so now in place of r2 we can put 65 degrees so we're gonna have o1 being equals to 180 minus 2 
multiply by 65 which will be 130 so o1 is equals to 50 degrees we just stick into the keywords and nothing else so a has two marks o, uh, b has two marks and then c has uh, five marks and then now let's do a the point two point two eight point two point two says let's prove that sp is parallel to tw so we're proving that sp is parallel to tw obviously we don't have coordinates here so there's no way we're going to be calculating the gradient we have to do that uh, using angles some way somehow so if these two lines are parallel uh, then this angle here uh, w1 should be equals to this angle p here uh, but then at the same time w1 should be equals to s2 why are we saying that to our keywords again tangent we're using the tan code theorem right we're sticking to the keyword so now we can say that w1 is equals to s2 uh, we already said that s2 will be close to 60 degrees right why are we saying s2 is close to 60 60 degrees because triangle psw is an equilateral so w1 is close to s2 but s2 is is, is close to s pw there are angles on an equilateral triangle and all those angles will be equal to 60 degrees and we're done with 8.2.2 we can give a reason and say that uh, they are alternate angles and then let's move to um 8.3 8.3 says in the diagram below a circle centered at o is drawn h j g and l are points on the circle triangle h g l is drawn o h o g bisects g l and m so we have 90 we have 90 and then we're given the values of the lengths and then 8.3.1 if mg is equals to six units so let's denote mg right so we are told here that mg is six units and om is x units so we have x here for om write hm in terms of x so let's look at hm so h starts here and then it goes down to m right so we want uh, the length of hm in terms of x hm is basically equals to uh, 2 radius minus mg right uh, because if we're looking for hg instead then it will just be 2 radius right uh, but then the only difference between hm and hg is that hm stops here at m and then we have that 6 going forward so hm is basically 2 radius minus mg uh but what is the radius uh we have oh as the radius right but then og is also a radius so let's write the radius in terms of og so if we write the radius in terms of og it will be x plus six right uh from here and o to m and from m to g it will be x plus six so if we substitute that in place of the radius we're gonna get two x plus 6 and then minus mg which is 6 right so that will be equals to 2x plus 2 multiplied by 6 12 minus 6 so hm will be equals to 2x plus 6 uh, units right and then now we can move to 8.3.2 calculate given reasons the length of the radius of the circle so we already know that the radius of the circle is equal to x plus six right so on this question uh, we can use triangle o j m right uh, let me just clear something so that we can make it uh, more clear uh, we are looking at triangle o j m right uh, we have uh, the radius of triangle ojm uh, which is equal to the radius of the circle so uh, that will be x plus 6 and then we have 12 as the adjacent and then x 
as the opposite, right? So we know fully well that on a right angle triangle, don't forget the angle here is 90, um, the radius squared will be equals to x squared plus y squared, right? The other two sides. So what is the radius here? The radius is x plus 6. So we square it and it will be equals to uh, the adjacent, uh, which is 12. So we're going to have 12 squared uh, plus the opposite, which is x. So we're going to have x squared. So what is x plus 6 squared? x multiplied by x is x squared. Uh, x multiplied by 6 is 6x. You multiply that by 2, you get plus 12x. And then 6 multiplied by 6, uh, that is 36. And that will be equals to 12 squared, 144. Uh, plus x squared, right? So look at this. We have x squared here. We have x squared here. So they're going to fall off, right? We're going to be left with 12x uh, plus 36 is equal to 144. So 12x is equal to uh, 144 minus 36. So we have 12x being equal to 108. Uh, you divide both sides by 12, you get x is equal to 9, right? Uh, but then we're not looking for x, we're looking for r, right? And we know fully well that r is equal to x plus 6. So that will be 9 plus 6, 15.